Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Hey guys, we're your hosts, M and J. Today the two of us thought that we would talk about continuity in animation and how there seems to be a few different schools of thought on it. Specifically how animation works with world building and the continuity of the setting. We're going to be talking about a few different shows and we don't mean any disrespect or hate towards them or the people who worked on them. These are just our opinions as viewers. So this video is about how inconsistency and continuity can affect the audience viewing these cartoons. A lot of the time, it's just small things, like the Powerpuff Girls sleeping arrangements. Sometimes Buttercup is on the left, and sometimes she's on the right. Sometimes Bubbles is in the center, and sometimes Blossom is. This doesn't have a huge effect on the viewing experience, it's just something the viewer might notice after some time. But then there are some shows where inconsistencies are almost constant, and these inconsistencies can get very distracting. We were binge-watching a few of Butch Hartman's videos here on YouTube. He's the creator of shows like The Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom. One of his videos is called Don't Do This in a Cartoon. We'll link it in the description. In it, he talks about a bad experience he had while working as a storyboard artist for Johnny Bravo. Hartman explains that he was storyboarding a scene where Johnny was using the vacuum for the first time, but it doesn't go well for him, so he ends up falling down the stairs. After he completed the storyboard, he was approached by the producer of the show, who told him that they couldn't use his work. He explained that Johnny Bravo's house has a specific floor plan, which apparently no one told Hartman about, so his storyboard didn't match the layout at all, forcing him to start over. Because of this bad experience, he decided that when he was working on his own shows, he just wouldn't have a layout. That way the artists would have the freedom to do whatever they wanted. After an experience like that, it's understandable why he would have this philosophy, but I do think that this can lead to problems in the storytelling if it's overused. It might not be noticeable to the audience if it's just here or there. Like The Fairly Odd Parents is a comedic episode show. So if the layout of the living room changes slightly, the audience probably won't notice because they're most likely focusing on the comedy coming from the characters and the story. Whatever magical shenanigans Timmy and his fairies are getting up to. Not having a layout for the house actually gives freedom to the writers too, and not just the artists. Because if the house doesn't have a layout, the writers can have an episode where Timmy has a bathroom in his room and there's an entire fairy convention in it, but they can also have an episode where it's important to the plot that there's only one bathroom in the house. Creative people really enjoy that freedom, and nobody wants to start over because they weren't told that the house had a floor plan. But from the perspective of an audience member, it can be kind of weird if you're just watching a bunch of Fairly Odd Parents episodes and these things come up. The Fairly Odd Parents isn't the only show to do this. Steven Universe is a show that gets criticized a lot for its animation because characters will often go off model or change sizes, sometimes in the same episode, and it becomes extremely distressing. Distracting. It's one of the reasons why we don't watch this show, because it was so hard to get into the animation. It doesn't really seem to be a problem so much with the backgrounds, but more the characters themselves. Apparently the characters don't have any set heights, and this was done to make it easier to animate. So that's usually what people cite when they talk about the criticism towards the animation. The show is very storyboard driven, and since there are no set heights for the characters, the animators will just go off of what the storyboard has, even if there are inconsistencies with the storyboards. There there are also different storyboard artists on the show, so that's another reason for the inconsistencies, because they all might draw things their own way. Personally, I don't think it's a good idea to not have character references and models for the animators to go off of, and would prefer a more uniformed look, but this is their show and they can do what they want with it, but it's understandable why many people would have a problem with it. We've talked about this one on this channel before, but the Netflix series She-Ra and the Princesses of Power also has some continuity inconsistencies that really bothered us when we were watching it. A big example of this is the staircase in Princess Glimmer's bedroom. Glimmer is a character who has the ability to teleport, so because of that her bed is suspended in the air, and she usually gets to it by teleporting. But for those who can't teleport, like her friend Bo, there's a staircase in her room that leads up to her bed. That way he can climb up it whenever he needs to. He actually uses them in the very first episode of the series, so it's established early on that this is the case with Glimmer's bed and her bedroom. Towards the end of the first season something happens and Glimmer isn't able to use her teleporting anymore. She wants to rest but she has to get up to her bed to do that. As the audience we know that this isn't a problem, she can just use her staircase to get up there. But in this episode the staircase is gone and they act like there never was a staircase in the first place. She and Bo spend quite a bit of time struggling to get up there, but as an audience member instead of feeling for Glimmer I'm just wondering what happened to the staircase. Because honestly this shouldn't be a problem, it was established that it 
it wasn't. Oddly enough, the staircase is actually back in the next episode, but this time it's silver instead of gold. None of this is ever explained. Were the stairs removed for some reason and then brought back? Or was it just that the writer wanted to have this joke? These episodes were written by different people, so maybe one writer wanted a convenient way for Bo to get to Glimmer's bed and another writer just wanted to have this joke. Or maybe there was a communication problem and it was just never addressed. Either way, it was something that was really noticeable and it really took us out of the show. But that's just our opinion. What do you guys think? Do you prefer the way Johnny Bravo did it where they had a set layout to make sure everything was consistent in Johnny Bravo's house? Or are you okay with the artists and writers having the freedom to do whatever they want? Either way, we think communication is really important when it comes to these stories. Like if there is a specific floor plan for the house, make sure that information gets to the artist. But thanks for watching. We'd love to hear from you, so leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more content from us. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye everybody. Bye guys.